In this video, we're going to review the laws of exponents and then use them to solve exponential equations. So to start off, let's review the product law. So the rule is that when the bases are the same and we're multiplying the two terms together, we're going to add the exponents. So this will be x to the power of m plus n. So for example, let's say that we're multiplying 2x squared times 3x cubed. Now the base in these two cases are x. So we're going to say that it's x to the power of 5 since we're going to add the 2 and the 3. However, the coefficients, we still do multiply them together. So this will be 2 times 3, which is 6. The quotient law is very similar. So when we're dividing two terms with the same base, we're going to now subtract the exponents. So for example, we will now divide our coefficients. So this one will be 12 divided by 3, which is 4. But for exponents, we don't divide the exponents, but we subtract. So we have 12 minus 3, and so this exponent is 9. So I wanted to show you and kind of not trick you, but show you what happens with exponents and what happens with the coefficients, even though I gave you the same numbers. Power of a power, remember that x to the m to the power of n means that we have n of these bases here. So that means that we have x to the power of m times n. Okay. So when we say that we have 2x cubed to the power of 4, that means we have four sets of the 2x cubes. So you can think of this as 2x cubed, 2x cubed, 2x cubed times 2x cubed. Okay. Now we won't want to do this all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise the 2 to the power of 4. Oops, my 4 is a little funny. So 2 to the power of 4. And then x will be to the power of 12. So 3 times 4. So then 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So we get 16 times x to the 12. Power of a quotient just means that we're going to apply the exponent to the numerator and the denominator. So this will be x to the m divided by y to the m. In the example here, we have this whole term in brackets to the power of 3. So every term inside gets the exponent 3. So it's going to be 2, x, 2 cubed, x cubed, divided by 5 cubed, and divided by y cubed. So simplifying or evaluating the coefficients, we get 2 cubed, which is 8. So we have 8x cubed. 5 cubed is 125. And then we have y cubed. Negative exponents. When we have negative exponents, remember that what we do is we flip the base. So this will be 1 over x. And then instead of the negative exponent, we now have a positive exponent, m. So we can also rewrite this one as 1 over x to the m because 1 to the m is still 1. So here I've given you two different examples. So with 13 to the negative 2, we have 1 over 13. And this will now be all squared. So we get 1 over 169. Now the second one I wanted to show you that when we flip or take the reciprocal of our base, nothing changes with the sign. So this is negative 3 fourths, so it will still be negative, but it will be 4 over 3. And then exponent will now be positive 3. So we have 4 cubed, which is 64, 3 cubed, which is 27, and we have three, we have an odd number of negative signs, so this question is still, or the answer will still be negative. Anything with a power of zero is going to be one. So x to the power of zero is one, x to the power of zero is one, y to the zero is one, minus five. So this one will give us negative three. All right, the last one is the rational exponent. So here we can see that x is raised to the power of m divided by n. So we can actually think of this and consider two ways to write this. So we have x to the power of 1 nth, and then to the power of m. Okay. So if we think of it this way, we can say the x is the nth power of x, and then to the power of m. Or we can also write this as x to the power of m, and then put the 1 nth on the outside. So this means that we have the nth root of x to the power of n. So if I do it in these two different ways as well, we can see that we have the cube root of 8 
and then we square root. Okay, so we have cube root of 8, which is 2, 2 squared, and then that gives us 4. If we do it the other way first, we can have the cube root, we're going to go 8 squared first. So then we have the cube root of 64, which then equals 4. Now you'll actually find it easier to probably cube root or square root first because then your number will be smaller before you square. Because some of you might not know what the cube root of 64 is. All right, so let's apply these rules to different um, questions here. So this first one we're going to take a look at is how to change the base of the powers. So here I want you to write each expression as a power with base 2. And this will be useful uh, when we're solving our exponential equations later. So 4, I can rewrite that as 2 to the power of 2. So I'm going to write that in brackets because a 4 is now being replaced with 2 to the power of 2. And then our 3 is on the outside. So now we have 2 to the power of 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay. Second one. Now we have a fraction here. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this first as 8 to the power of negative 1. And now I'm going to change the 8 to a base of 2. So this will be 2 cubed to the power of negative 1. So we get 2 to the negative 3. All right, the last one here, I actually have two terms or two numbers multiplied together. So 8 to the 2 thirds, I can rewrite this as 8 cubed and then to the 2 thirds. And the 16, now remember that this, the root here is a 2, so we're square rooting. So this will be 16 to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, this first term we've already kind of, we've already written it as a base 2. So this, 3 times 2 thirds will just be 2. So we have 2 squared here. And then in my second term, I'm going to rewrite the 16 as 2 to the power of 4. And then remember, it's still raised to the power of 3 over 2. So now we have 2 squared times 2. So 4 times 3 over 2 is going to be 6. So we have 2 squared times 2 to the 6. We're multiplying, so we're going to add our exponents to give us 2 to the 8. All right, so let's take a look at how to solve equations using um, a common base to do this. Okay, now in order to solve these equations, we're going to use the property that if c to the power of x is equal to c to the power of y, since the bases are the same here, then that means that the exponent x must equal y as well, otherwise it wouldn't be equal. Now this is true, however, c, actually I wrote the wrong variable here, so this should say c. However, c cannot equal certain numbers. So, so what, if you can think about it, c can't be 0, right? Because if we have both of these to be 0, x and y could actually be anything, and they didn't have to be equal. That also occurs with 1, because we can also have 1 to the power of 5, equals 1 to the power of negative 7, but both of these solutions would be okay however notice that our exponents are not equal and this also occurs when c is negative one so if c is any of these numbers negative one zero or one then we can't apply this property here okay so let's take a look at the problems on the left side here and then you can try the ones on the right side so solve for x so we can see that the bases are two and four so we're going to write both of them with a base of two that i see would be common so the left side's already done the 4 on the right, I'm going to rewrite that as 2 squared, and then to the power of x plus 3. So I can see that what I need to do, now that I have my bases to be the same, is I'm going to ignore the base, and therefore only concentrate on the exponent, so we know that 4x is equal to 2 times x plus 3. So that was the exponent on the outside. So I recommend that you rewrite it out before you solve it. So we have 4x equals 2x plus 6. Move the 2x to the left, so we get 2x equals 6. So x equals 3. Okay, I recommend that you always check your answers to make sure they are true. So we get 2 times, sorry, 2 to the power of 4 times 3 equals 4 to the power of 3 plus 3. So here we get 2 to the power of 12, 
on the right side we get 4 to the power 6 and when I plug it into my calculator I get 4096 on this side and on the other side I get the same thing as well so this one is good all right let's take a look at the next one so on the left we have a base of 5 but on the right we have a base of 1 so you might be wondering well, how can we make these to be the same so if you recall exponents I can rewrite this as 5 to the power of 0 so remember that 5 to the power of 0 is equal to 1 and that's a nice little tip um, that you can use so now that my bases are the same my exponents have to be equal as well so we get 2x equals negative 3 and then x equals negative 3 over 2. all right last question is this one here it looks a little bit complicated it has lots of different parts so my bases are 8 4 and 1 16 and I can see that they all have a base of 2 again so I'm going to read write them um, all with a base of 2. So 8 can be rewritten as 2 cubed to the power of 1 third. 4 can be rewritten as 2 squared to the power of x minus 2. 1 over 16 can be rewritten as 2 to the negative 4 and then to the power of 1 fourth. Now at this step I don't want you to just to eliminate your bases because right now it's not really fair because on the left side we have two bases but on the right side we only have one so what we need to do is we need to combine um, the left side so that there's only one base as well so we have a two cubed cube three times one third is going to be one so this reduces to two to the power of one times two to the power of two x minus four and then on the right side we have two to the power of negative one now this looks nicer we're almost there we're going to combine these two terms here so remember that we're multiplying so we're going to add the exponents so this will be 2 to the power of 2x minus 3 so what I did was take 1 and add it to the 2x minus 4 so now I have one term on each side with only one base so now that I can say that the bases are the same therefore the exponents have to be the same as well. So I'm going to rewrite it as 2x minus 3 equals negative 1, and then 2x equals 3, and then x equals 3 over 2. And then that's it.